Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Hannah and I film videos relating to simple living, slow living, lifestyle and multiple sclerosis. If this is the first video that you are clicking on then welcome! Thank you for clicking on this video. If you enjoy it and you would like to see more content from me make sure you hit that lovely red subscribe button and click the notification bell that way you will never miss any of my videos and I would really love to grow this channel. I am enjoying filming and editing and all that jazz so much and I love putting content out there. Um, you may have seen that I have recently come off social media. I will leave my quitting social media video in the up here and in the description bar below if you'd like to check that out and how quitting social media has changed my life. And yeah, I've got more time so I'm going to be uploading two videos a week, every week from May on Wednesdays and Sundays. This video, this week from the 19th of April to the 24th of April here in the UK, it is MS Awareness Week. I wanted to film a little video about my life with MS seven years on. I've been diagnosed with MS seven years this year and I just wanted to have like just a reflection on it and what I've learnt and share hopefully some things which I hope will help any of you out there or just give you some comfort, peace of mind or just reassurance to know that you're not alone. So with that being said, grab yourselves a drink, grabs, grabs yourselves, grab yourself a drink. I've got a mocha in here. I really hope you enjoy this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did like it. Leave me any comments in the comment section bar below and I will be sure to answer and reply to all of them. So, as I have mentioned, I have been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis for seven years this year. And boy, has it been a journey. And I know there are people out there who have been diagnosed with MS a lot longer, but I was talking to my auntie yesterday and I said, can you believe I've had MS for seven years now? It's just insane. It's just crazy. If you would like to see my diagnosis story, I will leave it up in the top here on the description box below. And I also have a ent an entire playlist relating to multiple sclerosis, how I cope with a bad day, MS fatigue, food. They're all, I filmed them a few, uh, like a year or so ago now. So I'm going to be filming some more up-to-date videos regarding that. So if that's something you are looking forward to, again, give it a th give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the d comment section bar below. What I have learned from multiple sclerosis. I have written some points down. So if I if you see me looking down at my uh, looking down I'm just looking at my notes. What I have learned from multiple sclerosis. I have learned that you really do have some true friends. I was the sort of person where I attract people to me and I don't mean to sound big headed when I do but I seem to have quite a lot of people who I get on with and I interact with and have fun and you know however when I was diagnosed with MS, MS those people vanished and I was left with a handful of amazing amazing friends and family who are my rock who support me who understand and I think that is so important and I feel if you only have a couple of people who truly understand how you feel and you they are so understanding when you say you can't do something they are the people to hold on to so I have learned that just having a couple of really 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 close friends is more is more beneficial to me than having a whole group also I'm slightly introverted so I kind of like spending time on my own but that's another story so yeah, that is number, point number one. Point number two is that everyone with multiple sclerosis is completely different. They call it the snowflake condition. I don't like to say disease, condition. And yeah, we're all different. We're all on the same path, but we're all taking different journeys. So we are all in this together. We can all be compassionate towards one another, loving, caring, 
give advice, you guidance, but we all have our own journey to come to terms with this diagnosis. The next point I want to talk about is the support network that I've discovered. My cat is drinking my water. Literally, he's putting his paw into my water and drinking it. That's nice. Anyway, there's so much, there's such a great community out there for people with MS, especially younger people with MS. There's a group called MS Together, which you can find on Facebook and Instagram. They also have a WhatsApp group chat, and it's all full of younger people with multiple sclerosis, which, you know, when I was first diagnosed, I didn't have, like, I didn't, I couldn't find any, you know, many people of my own age in the same, who under, who truly understood how I felt at that time. So, yeah, the support network is amazing, and social media is good for that reason. I have had my own reasons for coming off social media, which like I said at the beginning, I will leave the link to why I came off social media in the description box below for you all. My next point is listening to my body. Learning to listen to my body has been a journey on its own. There have been countless times when I have overdone it, don't drink my mocha, Arthur, <laughs> when I have overdone it, and I've been in bed for the next couple of days, or I've pushed myself and it's just made me feel worse. And my body I've discovered gives me signs when I need to rest. And it's quite funny because I have like cold-like symptoms. So I get like a blocked up nose. You, gen you know when you genuinely feel run down? That's how I feel and that's when I know fatigue is on its way and I need to rest. Sometimes I need to rest for five minutes, sometimes I need to rest for a whole afternoon, sometimes I rest for a couple of hours and I feel okay. Just depends how I feel. But I've, I'm so proud that I've learned how, what the signs are, which is really, really good. And I love my body. If MS has taught me anything, it's to love my body, to nurture it, to take care of it and to sometimes put myself first which has been a long journey which I'm finally doing which is really really good and it in the long run long run it's helping me to live a better life with multiple sclerosis and a more peaceful happy life with it the next thing I have learnt is taking life slowly, relaxing, reducing stress. Now, when I say reducing stress, some of you may be thinking, well, that's easier said than done, or that's in it. I do a lot of meditation, and I, you know, again, I, some of you will be thinking, great, here we go, meditation. Honestly, it works. Controlling the breath, keeping calm, slow, and just relaxing, going to going into that kind of euphoric state of mind. And, you know, meditation has really helped me. And it's just, you know, for me, learning to, like I mentioned, listening to my body, but also appreciating all the little things in life like we've got beautiful cherry blossom outside our window smelling the cherry blossom when I walk to work walk slowly and just take everything in being grateful that I can walk gratitude is such a big thing and I think as soon as you can change your mindset with multiple sclerosis things tend to work out for the better I'm so grateful every single day that I can wash my own hair, that I can cook a meal for myself, that I can walk to work. I'm so grateful. However, I'm also mindful. So there are times when I need to get a microwave board dinner out of the freezer or that I just have to have a pizza that I've got in. I don't eat clean, which I'm gonna move on to in a second. I do not eat clean. I eat mindfully, I don't overeat, but if one day I can't, I don't have the energy to make a healthy, clean, high-packed vegetable dinner, 
I do not feel bad that I have to have a pizza flatbread out of the freezer because it's more important that you get food in you. I don't necessarily think that you should re be having sugary foods. I don't necessarily think that's a good idea, but I am not a nutritionist. I am not specialized in diets for multiple sclerosis. This is just me and how I do things. But, you know, if I, for, one, for whatever reason, can't cook a meal, then, you know, I just get some sort of food into my body. That is why I meal prep. Another thing that I've learned, being organized, meal prepping, organizing my life, having a, a schedule, um, being organized for me has really helped my MS. It's helped with uh, fatigue. I was gonna say memory fatigue, but it's not that at all. But you know, it's helped with fatigue, decision fatigue, that's what I was thinking of. And you know, like laying my clothes out the, the night before, um, so I know what I'm wearing in the morning, preparing meals so I could just go into the fridge and get out a meal that's relatively well balanced in nutrition. Frozen veg. Frozen veg is a godsend because that is just, you get vegetables inside you one way or another. Keeping fruit in the fridge and freeze in fridge and stuff and snacking on that and things like that. Which comes on to my next point. I learnt from um, having MS that kale and spinach does not cure it. <laughs> no matter how many interesting green smoothies I can I digest, it does not cure multiple sclerosis. I have still relapsed by having a smoothie filled with kale and celery and spinach and ginger and cayenne pepper and, you know, when it comes to MS and food, which I will be doing a separate video on, so make sure you stay tuned for that, I think eating a well-balanced diet, trying to reduce the amount of sugar that you have, trying to reduce the amount of dairy that you have, because both of those can cause inflammation, is very beneficial and that is what I do. But it's like I have a mocha. I enjoy mochas. I like mochas. They bring me joy. I'm not gonna stop drinking them. I like cake. I will continue to eat cake, but I eat mindfully and I make sure, you know, I eat things that are considered good for multiple sclerosis. But I think diet and MS is a very difficult topic because we are all different. So what works for one might not work for another. So. I love the green smoothies. In fact, I'm going to be starting to do them again because not only does it is it does it help MS or if it doesn't, I don't know. I never noticed a difference, but it made me feel good genuine generally inside, like just made me feel healthy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that is that point. My next point is every limitation has an adaption, which is what I've learned over the last 7 years. There are certain things that I struggle to do or I can't do, so I have found adaptions to be able to do them. What I mean is I have to go to bed at half seven, eight o'clock, usually asleep between half eight and nine. I've tried to stay up till 10 o'clock and I've been exhausted the next day. So that limitation, the adaption is I'm a morning person. I wake up at 5.30 in the morning, I'm able to sit and relax and read my book and journal and meditate and do my manifestation morning and have a really peaceful, relaxing morning before my day at work. So that's an, an adaption. Another adaption is, you know, if I before in the past wanted to go to the shops or go into town and go look around all the shops with my friends, but I couldn't walk we'd hire a wheelchair. There's no shame in being in a wheelchair. There is no shame with needing aids to help you get around, to help you live life. My neurologist said to me that I need to live my life. I could be staying at home, in bed, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and I could still relapse. He told me to live my life. So that's when I found adaptions with the limitations that um, challenged me. 
So that is a really, really great point. I'm gonna reduce my talking because this is long already. So two final points which I'm gonna link together. Sleep has been my friend, but sometimes it hasn't helped. Um, so Arthur's being naughty again. Arthur, no. <laughs> you know, and um, I learn that when I wake up the next day, if I am exhausted, I take my time. I don't overdo it. If I can't clean the house one day, well, that's fine. It could be left for another day and doesn't really matter. The other final point I'm going to touch on what I've learnt from having MS is I finally learnt to A, put myself first, listen to my body and say no. Saying no used to be really hard for me. I always felt obliged to say, oh, okay then, or mm, yeah, okay, I'll go out for a walk even though I really don't want to and I'm really tired, but okay, and then making myself feel worse. That happened often, but now, if I feel bad, I literally will say, look, I'm really sorry, but I can't do this today. Maybe we could do it another day. I, I'm just not feeling well today, but you know, I'm fine, but I just, I can't do this particular thing today. And it makes me feel so proud and so good because I'm putting myself first and I've learned that rest is not a bad thing. You are not lazy if you need to rest. You are not lazy if you need to spend an afternoon in bed. You are looking after your body, your mind, and you need to put yourself first. If anyone calls you lazy, you tell them to just go away. Maybe not in those words, but go away because they don't understand or know how you're feeling. And sometimes I've been sat here on, in, you know, on a weekend afternoon with George and I've just said, I need to go and lie down. He said, oh, okay, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, 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 I need to stop right now and go and lie down for an hour or two and not speak. Sometimes how I regain my energy is just not speaking and being silent and just being, being, you know? Um, so, that's what I've learnt from having MS, how I feel seven years on. I feel really good. I feel really good, like now. I feel that uh, me and MS, we're kind of on the same page now. I feel like I finally discovered my path, my journey, like I'm finally on the right track. I know when I need to rest. I know that if I eat cake, it's not going to send me into a relapse or if I just, you know, I can manage things a lot better now. I've, I've learned how to manage life with MS and I've learned to stand up for myself and it just makes me feel so proud and so happy and so grateful I'm so grateful for MS, I'm so thankful for it because I've met so many amazing people, I've met so many amazing friends from it. I've learned all about slow living and enjoying the quiet life and enjoying all those little things and appreciating the little things like brushing my own teeth, washing my hair, washing my body, making myself a meal, making myself a mocha. That I literally just spilled all down my face, oh my god. I literally just spilled that everywhere. But do you know what I mean? It's just little, it's, yeah. I can just finally say now that for me, I found peace and I feel good, really good. I know that we are all on different journeys on the same path and I wanted this video to be reassuring compassionate understanding like I if you're not having a good time right now I understand how you feel I want to give you all a massive hug and I want to tell you that it will be okay there will be <clears throat> there will be sunshine amongst the storms and there will be good times 
as well as challenging times. I don't like to say the word bad because bad is a negative word. Challenging and then you overcome them. We all overcome our challenges. We are all strong. We are all MS warriors and I'm just so <clears throat> proud of everyone who lives with this condition daily because we don't look sick. We get, we get uh, insulted, we get abused, we get mistreated, we get um, discriminated and we still fight back and we still march forward and we are all amazing and that is why I wanted to film this video to say that you are awesome, you are an MS warrior and you can achieve anything you want to achieve in life. I am now going to stop talking because this is like 22 minutes long. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please share this video with everyone you know so we can get the message out about multiple sclerosis so people can understand a bit more about it that, you know, just get a bit more understanding. That's it. So I'd really love it if you would share this on your social media, share this with your friends and family. If you really enjoyed this video and you would like to see more videos, please give this video a thumbs up. Please. My video just cut off. I think that's a sign. I think that's a sign. Have a wonderful rest of your week. It's MS Awareness Week. Let's spread some compassion, love and joy amongst the community. And I will see you all on Sunday. Bye.